In this video, using Apple Motion, we're gonna build this paper cutout animation inspired by Marquez Brownlee's The Studio Channel. As always, if you're a Patreon member, you can download this effect and use it in your videos right now. Or if you don't feel like subscribing, you can pick it up as a one-time purchase on my Patreon shop. Let's open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the Project Browser, you can always go up to File and then select New from Project Browser. To make this tutorial a little bit easier to follow, I'm actually going to use the Motion project. However, if you feel like stepping things up a bit, you could technically build this with the Final Cut effect, and that would make it so you could use it over and over again over in Final Cut Pro. Over on the right side, I'm going to strongly recommend that you set your frame rate to whatever you typically work with in Final Cut Pro. This is going to mitigate bugs for particular effects we are using if you send it over to Final Cut Pro. I'm going to be working on a 4K timeline, and the duration really doesn't matter. I'm just going to leave it at 10 seconds. The first thing we need to do is have an image to work with, so I'm going to select Select my group and push command I to import and locate the logo image I want to use. With that imported, let's go ahead and just rename it so it's a little bit more visually clear. And after that, we want to apply a layer that will copy whatever the shape of this logo is. So to do that, we're going to use something called a clone layer. Selecting that logo, you can either press K to create a clone layer, or you can right click on it and then select make clone layer. I want this clone layer to be underneath the logo, so I'm just going to click and drag that down. And then I want this clone layer to have its own individual group. Selecting that clone layer, we'll right click and select group. So now this clone layer group is going to be contained in that primary group. Let's rename the clone layer group to be paper. To make this effect visible, we first need to select the paper group and go on over to the inspector. From there, we'll go to properties and locate the scale. Let's just scale this up to 125%. Now, another problem we're gonna run into is if we ever want to move the logo in our frame, you'll notice that that clone layer is not moving with it. This is super easy to fix. Let's select the paper group, then going to the position parameter, we'll click on the down arrow, we'll add a parameter behavior, and we're gonna select link. From there, we'll just drag the logo into this drop zone, and now wherever we move this primary logo, that clone layer is also going to move to. With that out of the way, it's time to start applying the effects. The first filter we want to apply is to change the color because right now it has all of the colors used in my logo. So to fix that, let's go up to filters. We'll go down to stylize and we're gonna select the fill filter. This just converts whatever is there into a solid color. I'm gonna change the fill over to white. This is totally up to you, whatever color you want your paper to be. But then after that, we want to make the edges look much more jagged, almost like they were cut out from a piece of paper very poorly. With the paper group selected, we'll go up to filters, We'll go down to stylize, and this time we're going to apply the crystallize filter. If I expand the size of this, you can see how this is starting to take shape. If I push play though, you'll notice that this filter is slowly warping through different variations. We're gonna adjust for that at the very end, but in this step, we're going to change the speed from 0.5 all the way up to two. I strongly recommend that you leave the speed as high as possible to make the effect work as well as it can. So pushing play, we can see that it's going through different formations much, much faster. This next step is totally up to you. Taking a look at this paper, you'll see how there's darker parts and lighter parts, and it creates a nice sense of shading. If you don't like that shading very much and you want to mitigate it as much as possible, you can select your paper group, go up to filters, go down to color, and this time we're going to select the levels filter. This will enable us to almost create a curve where it crushes all of the alpha channels together, giving us a nice solid background. Going over to the left side, we can find this histogram, and instead of working with RGB, let's change it to alpha. Again, taking a look at the background here, as we take this white zone and drag that to the left, you'll notice that it gets more and more solidified. So you can solidify this as much as you want. That's looking pretty solid to me right there. And so now pushing play, we can see it's going through the different formations, but there's a lot less shading going on. Next, I wanna add a bit of texture onto everything. I want it both on the logo and on the backdrop as if they're a part of the same piece of paper. To do so, we're going to select the group that contains everything. And for clarity's sake, let's just call it everything. With the everything group selected, let's go up to filters. We'll go to stylize and we're gonna select add noise. It's gonna add a bunch of color static noise to this, which I'm not a huge fan of, but there is a particular noise pattern that I love. So under type, 
let's change that to pink noise. I also don't like that it's bringing in some alternate colors here, so let's change that to monochromatic. Again, pushing play, we can see the noise taking place on our image, and you'll also notice it's taking shape here on the background image. Next, I'm taking some inspiration from the studio, Marquez Brownlee's channel, and they have some great paper texture looking animations on all their different logos and graphics. And one thing I noticed is they have a little bit of warping. So let's go ahead and apply that. Selecting our everything group, we'll go up to filters, we'll go down to distortion, and we're gonna select underwater. Things look a little bit crazy here, so let's find the refraction and set this down to a value of five. So it's very subtle. And then pushing play, we can see how it's lightly warping our image. If you want, you can adjust the size of it so the entire logo is being pushed around subtly or you can shrink the size of it so smaller parts are actually being warped. I like it at the default of two, but it's totally up to you. So at this moment now, it looks like we have a piece of jello with static on it and weird crystallized backgrounds. It's really not the greatest looking image. It doesn't look like it's paper. So that is where this next step comes into play and that is to make it look like stop motion using the strobe filter. To do so, we're going to select the everything group. We'll go to filters. We'll go down to time and we're going to select strobe. The strobe filter essentially lets us set a frame rate for whatever layer we've applied it to. Right now it's set to 15. Let's drop this all the way down to two. And pushing play now, you can see how we have this beautiful looking stop motion effect on our logo. It looks like it's a part of a piece of paper and that looks like the background edges are being cut out in a nice way. Now the final step of this is to add in a nice drop shadow. You're not gonna see the drop shadow against this black background. So let's go up to our color settings and enable the transparent backdrop. From there, we'll select the everything group and we'll go down to the bottom left here in the properties and find drop shadow. Let's enable that, then we can push show, drag up the distance, drag up the blur, make it look however you want. If you don't want any blur, you could totally do that as well, completely up to you. But what's awesome is that drop shadow is going to update with the paper cutout. So pushing play now, we have this beautiful cutout. If you want more shading in the cutout, you could disable the levels, completely up to you how you want this to look. So now that we've added this logo, what if we wanna bring in a completely different logo? Well, it's super easy in Apple Motion using drop zones. I'm going to select the logo that we've added in. We'll go to image and find the drop zone and change the type from off over to drop zone. And now in Finder, I could drag in any image I want onto that drop zone. We could shrink it down as necessary. And just like that, you can see that we have this same paper effect being applied to a completely new logo. If you enjoyed the style of this video and you wanna take your Apple Motion knowledge to the next level, I strongly recommend that you check out my Apple Motion Masterclass, which comes with seven and a half hours of high quality training, an exclusive Discord channel, bonus videos, and I just did an hour long live stream exclusive to the Apple Motion Masterclass members. If you're interested in all of that, you can check out the links down below. Plus there's a 20% off coupon code as a thank you for watching this video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. And with that being said, I cannot wait to see you in the next one.